Research in common parlance refers to a search for knowledge. One can also define research as a scientific and systematic search for pertinent information on a specific topic. In fact, research is an art of scientific investigation. The Advanced Learner's Dictionary of Current English lays down the meaning of research as a careful investigation or inquiry, especially through search for new facts in any branch of knowledge. Redmond and Mori define research as a systematized effort to gain a new knowledge. Some people consider research as a movement, a movement from the known to the unknown. It is actually a voyage to discovery. We all possess the vital instinct of inquisitiveness for when the unknown confronts us. We wonder and our inquisitiveness makes us probe and attain full and fuller understanding of the unknown. The inquisitiveness is the mother of all knowledge and the method which man employs for obtaining the knowledge of whatever the unknown can be termed as research. What is social research? Social research to research conducted by the social scientists which follows by the systematic plan. Social research methods can generally vary along a quantitative or qualitative dimension. Quantitative designs approach social phenomena through quantifiable evidence and often rely on statistical analysis of many cases or across intentionally designed treatments in an experiment to create valid and reliable general claims related to quantity. Qualitative designs emphasize understanding of social phenomena through direct observation, communication with participants or analysis of text and may stress contextual subjective accuracy over generality related to quality. While various methods are some, may sometimes be classified as quantitative or qualitative, most methods contain elements of both. For example, qualitative data analysis often involves a fairly structured approach to coding the raw data into systematic information and thus quantifying intercoder reliability. Thus, a strong distinction between qualitative and quantitative should really be seen as a somewhat more complex relationship, such that many methods may be both quantitative and qualitative. Social scientists employ a range of methods in order to analyze a vast breadth of social phenomena, from census survey data derived from millions of individuals to the in-depth analysis of single agents' social experiences, from monitoring what is happening on contemporary streets to the investigation of ancient historical documents. The methods rooted in classical sociology and statistics have formed the basis for research in other disciplines such as political science, media studies, program evaluation, and market research. Importance of social research We can't solve our social problems until we understand how they come about persist. Social science research offers a way to examine and understand the operation of human social affairs. It provides points of views and technical procedures that uncover things that would otherwise escape our awareness. Often as the cliche goes, Things are not what they seem. Social science research can make that clear. Many of the things social scientists study including all the social problems you have just read about generate deep emotions and firm convictions in most people. This makes effective inquiry into the facts difficult at best, all too often. Researchers manage only to confirm their initial prejudices. The special value of social science research methods is that they offer a way to address such issues with logical and observational rigor. They let us pierce through our personal viewpoints and take a look at the world that lies beyond our own perspectives. And it is that world beyond that holds the solutions to the social problems we face today. Objectives and Motivations of Research Objectives of Research The purpose of research is to discover answers to questions through the application of scientific procedures. The main aim of research is to find out the truth which is hidden and which has not been discovered as yet. Though each research study has its own specific purpose, we may think of research objectives as falling into a number of following broad groupings. To gain familiarity with the phenomenon or to achieve new insights into it, that is, studies with this object in view are termed as exploratory or formulative research studies. 
to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual situation or a group studies with this object in view are known as descriptive research studies to determine the frequency with which something occurs or with which it is associated with something else studies with this object in view are known as diagnostic research studies to test a hypothesis of a causal relationship between variables such studies are known as hypothesis testing research studies motivation in research what makes people to undertake research this is a question of fundamental importance the possible motives for doing research may be either one or more of the following desire to get a research degree along with its consequential benefits desire to face the challenge in solving the unsolved problems that is concern over practical problems initiates research desire to get intellectual joy of doing some creative work desire to be of service to society desire to get respectability however this is not an exhaustive list of factors motivating people to undertake research studies many more factors such as directives of government employment conditions curiosity about new things desire to understand causal relationships social thinking and awakening and the like may as well motivate or at times compel people to perform research operations foundations of social research sociological positivism the origin of the survey can be traced back at least early as domesday book in 1086 well some cross scholars pinpoint the origin of demography to 1663 with the publication of John Gaunt's Natural and Political Observations upon the bills of mortality social research began most intentionally however with the positivist philosophy of science in the early 19th century statistical sociological research and indeed the formal academic discipline of sociology began with the work of Emile Durkheim Durkheim rejected much of the detail of Comte's philosophy He retained and refined its methods maintaining that the social sciences are a logical continuation of the natural ones into the realm of human activity and insisting that they may retain the same objectivity rationalism and approach to causality Durkheim set up the first European department of sociology in the University of Bordeaux in 1895 publishing his rules of sociological methods in this text he argued Our main goal is to extend scientific rationalism to human conduct what has been called our positivism is but a consequence of this rationalism Durkheim seminal monograph suicide a case study of suicidal rates amongst catholics and protestant populations distinguished sociological analysis from psychological or philosophy by carefully examining suicide statistics in different police districts He attempted to demonstrate that Catholic communities have a lower suicide rate than that of Protestants, something he attributed to social as opposed to individual or psychological causes. He developed the notion of objective suis generis social facts to delineate a unique empirical object for the science of sociology to study. Through such studies, he posited that sociology would be able to determine whether any given society is healthy or pathological and seek social reform to negate organic breakdown or social anomie for durkheim sociology could be described as the science of institutions their genesis and their functioning modern methodologies in the mid 20th century there was a general but not universal trend for us american sociology to be more scientific in nature due to the prominence at the time of action theory and other system theoretical approaches robert k merton released his social theory and social structure by the turn of 1960s sociological research was increasingly employed as a tool by governments and businesses worldwide sociologists developed new types of quantitative and qualitative research methods paul lazard's field founded columbia university's bureau of applied social research where he exerted a tremendous influence over the techniques and the organization of social research his main contributions to sociological method have earned him the title of founder of modern empirical sociology lasses felt made great strides in statistical survey analysis panel methods 
latent structure analysis and contextual analysis many of his ideas have been so influential as to now be considered self evident types of research design let us see four types of research design now they are experimental research design case study research design longitudinal research design cross sectional research design experimental research design an experiment is a research design where a certain degree of control over a given set of variables is exercised by the researcher when conducting an investigation experiments are used to test new hypotheses or existing theories with the end in view of confirming or refuting them the experiment starts off with a problem statement a hypothesis is formulated and then an experiment is carried out to find out if the hypothesis is correct or not the results are analyzed using statistics that form the basis in coming up with a conclusion when experiments have already been done getting the same results a theory may be formed which are then conveyed through publication of findings for example an experiment is carried out to find out which amount of a toxin will cause symptoms to experimental animals referred to generally as guinea pigs experimentation need not be done only in laboratories case study research design in case study research an investigator studies an individual or small group of individuals with an unusual condition or situation case studies are typically clinical in scope the investigator often a site clinical sociologist sometimes uses self report measures to acquire quantifiable data on the subject a comprehensive case study including a long term follow up can last months or years on the positive side case studies obtain useful information about individuals and small groups on the negative side they tend to apply only to individuals with similar characteristics rather than to the general population the high likelihood of the investigators biases affecting subjects responses limits the generalizability of this method longitudinal research design a longitudinal research design involves collection of data over a period of time this is further subdivided into three types namely trend study cohort study and panel study trend study a trend study is a type of longitudinal research design that looks into the dynamics of a particular characteristic of the population over time for example a researcher might want to study the people's references for projects whether the government or non government in their community respondents of the study vary across study periods cohort study a cohort study is a type of longitudinal research design where a cohort is tracked over extended periods of time a cohort is a group of individuals who have shared a particular time together during a particular time span for example a group of indigenous peoples living in the forest for decades panel study a panel study is a type of longitudinal research design that involves collection of data from a panel or the same set of people over several points in time by measuring specific dependent variable identified by the researcher to achieve a study objective from the data gathered it is possible to predict cause effect relationship over a given time panel study is usually done when it is difficult to analyze a case study which is only a one shot deal people's shifting attitude and behavior can be detected for example cause effect relationship may be investigated between the number of faculty research outputs and the amount of time given for research as workload over 3 years cross sectional research design a cross sectional research design is a common research design used by social scientists it gathers data from a cross section of a population for example a contingent valuation study asks a sample of a population regarding their willingness to pay to preserve a given forest ecosystem accessible to them choosing the correct research design will enable the researcher to gain a better understanding of social phenomena this familiarity with these different research designs is a requisite for a well guided research study survey research survey research involves interviewing or administering questionnaires or written surveys to large numbers of people 
The investigator analyzes the data obtained from surveys to learn about similarities, differences and trends. He or she then makes predictions about the population being studied. As with most research methods, survey research brings about advantages and disadvantages. Advantages include obtaining information from a large number of respondents, conducting personal interviews at a time convenient for respondents, and acquiring data as inexpensively as possible. Mail-in surveys have the added advantage of ensuring anonymity and thus prompting respondents to answer questions truthfully. Disadvantages of survey research include voluntary bias, interviewer bias, and distortion. Volunteer bias occur when a sample of volunteers is not representative of the general population. Subjects who are willing to talk about certain topics may answer surveys differently than those who are not willing to talk. Interviewer bias occurs when an interviewer's expectations are insignificant gestures, for example, frowning or smiling, inadvertently influence the subject's response one way or the other. Distortion occurs when a subject does not respond to questions honestly. Observational research Because distortion can be a serious limitation of surveys, observational research involves directly observing subjects' reactions either in a laboratory called laboratory observation or in a natural setting called naturalistic observation. Observational research reduces the possibility that subjects will not give totally honest accounts of the experiences, not take the study seriously and fail to remember or feel embarrassed. Observational research has limitations however. Subject bias is common because volunteer subjects may not be representative of the general public. Individuals who agree to observation and monitoring may function differently than those who do not. They may also function differently in a laboratory settings than they do in other settings. Correlational research A sociologist may also conduct correlational research. A correlation is a relationship between two variables or factors that change. These factors can be characteristics, attitudes, behaviors or events. Correlational research attempts to determine if a relationship exists between two variables and the degree of that relationship. A social researcher can use case studies, surveys, interviews and observational research to discover correlations. Correlations are either positive, negative or non-existent. In a positive correlation, the values of the variables increase or decrease, co-vary together. In a negative correlation, one variable increases as the other decreases. In a non-existent correlation, no relationship exists between the variables. People commonly confuse correlation with causation. Correlational data do not indicate cause and effect relationships. When a correlation exists, changes in the value of one variable reflect changes in the value of the other. The correlation does not imply that one variable causes the other, only that both variables somehow relate to one another. To study the effects that variables have on each other, an investigator must conduct an experiment. Cross-cultural research Sensitivity to others' norms, folkways, values, morals, attitudes, customs and practices necessitates knowledge of other societies and cultures. Sociologists may conduct cross-cultural research or research designed to reveal variations across different groups of people. Most cross-cultural research involves survey, direct observation and participant observation methods of research. Participant observation requires that an observer becomes a member of his or her subject's community. An advantage of this method of research is the opportunity it provides to study what actually occurs within a community and then consider that information within the political, economic, social and religious systems of that community. Cross-cultural research demonstrates that Western cultural standards do not necessarily apply to other societies. What may be normal or acceptable for one group may be abnormal or unacceptable to another. Research with existing data or secondary analysis Some sociologists conduct research by using data that other social scientists have already collected. 
the use of publicly accessing information is known as secondary analysis and is most common in situations in which collecting new data is impractical or unnecessary sociologists may obtain statistical data for analysis from businesses academic institutions and governmental agencies to name only a few sources or they may use historical or library information to generate their hypothesis the ethics of social research are shared with those of medical research the ethics of social research respect for persons beneficence justice respect for persons the principle of respect for persons holds that individuals should be respected as autonomous agents capable of making their own decisions subjects with diminished autonomy deserve special considerations a cornerstone of this principle is the use of informed consent beneficence the principle of beneficence holds that the subjects of research should be protected from harm the research should bring tangible benefits to society by this definition research with no scientific merit is automatically considered unethical justice the principle of justice states the benefits of research should be distributed fairly the definition of fairness used in case dependent varying between to each person an equal share to each person according to individual need to each person according to individual effort to each person according to societal contribution to each person according to merit social research is aimed towards an understanding of social phenomena applying the appropriate research design in gathering the required data about people and their behavior is essential in understanding the complexities of human behavior social research uses both quantitative and qualitative approaches the former approach focuses on quantifying evidence and usually apply statistics in analyzing the data gathered to reveal generalities while the latter aims to achieve understanding through subjective analysis of subjects and emphasizes the context by which things happen the number of subjects of social research scientists range from a multitude of people to individuals documents are also examined to strengthen the findings